What's going on you guys, my name is Kirby Downey and welcome to this awesome video where I'll be showing you how you can use SolidWorks 3D printing but a painting to create something awesome like this. This is a replica of prop from the upcoming game Borderlands. We super excited about it. So this is a fun little project that I wanted to make. I, I, it's been a while since I've made a replica weapon so I thought why not do it with the upcoming Borderlands game because what makes this so unique is that it's a tier door. What makes tier door really awesome, there's a special perk you get where instead of reloading the magazine, you throw the gun. It sprouts little legs and runs away and pew pews everybody you can find. So I thought there was a fun little touch. It exploded on the internet when they first announced that they're going to have weapons with legs. So I thought why not do it myself. Make my own little weapon with legs and now it's normal. So, Part of the challenge of creating this was to actually make a stand, which I nailed. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I designed it, thinking behind everything, uh, the printing of it, the painting of it, and getting to a final product. And just talking about how to make your weapon con safe. What that means is that you can take it to conventions if you're doing cosplays and stuff. So let's get into how I made this awesome weapon. Pew, 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 pew. The first thing we do is we open up SolidWorks we're going to be inserting an image which is the one of the profiles of the prop this will allow us to kind of trace and design around and use for reference as we're designing first thing we need to do is get the scale right so I create a section around 30 mils. It's a section that I've measured on my hand that I know need, my hand needs to fit in a specific area. And I just line up the drawing until it's around there. Once I'm happy with that, I got rid of the background just so that I can see around the the prop as I'm busy, as I'm busy designing it. Makes it easier just to see when there's less things around. And just a reminder, this video is sponsored by SolidWorks. If you want to know more about SolidWorks, follow the link below. If you want to check out more of the tutorials I've created directly with SolidWorks, all them juicy links are down below. So the design process here was very basic and simple. I just had to figure out a place to start and then build around from there. All of the features I'm using here are basic. All the features I'm using here are basic boss extrudes and boss cuts. Basically just generating shapes and then cutting them away and shaping them with fillets and chamfers. Very, very simple design techniques. As I'm busy designing, I'm taking into consideration of certain parts I want to keep separate just to help with the printing process. Once that was done, we then jumped into printing. Everything was printed on the Prusa MK3S using a variety of different rigid ink PLA plastics that I still had lying around. First thing to do once they're off the printer is to pop off all the support materials. The great thing about the Prusa machines is that these are super, super easy and so good to remove.
to allow the magazine to kind of hold its own place I glued some magnets into the actual magazine and then I needed to put magnets inside of the case so I connected them to get the polarity I put the magnets in place I use a larger one to hold them where they are lifted it out slightly so that one remained in the correct polarity still with the large magnet in place just to hold it while I pour a bit of super glue on it I then spray it with an activator spray this dries it faster and then remove the larger magnet that allowed them to stay in place working like a charm To assemble this I used a two part epoxy uh, glue and a bit of super glue. This just helps out with a really really strong bond and then a couple of dabs of super glue holds it in place while the epoxy glue sets. So each part is slowly put together one by one using steel rods to align everything and again to give strength Once that was all done, I just needed to clean up. I always put a bit of cling film around the cardboard or bit of that waste that I'm using so I can save that for another build. Then we let that dry overnight. So this is it before we get into the painting. Start off with a, a grey high coat primer. This will highlight all the imperfections and areas that need to be filled or sanded, anything that needs to be a bit fixed. So that's it with the first coat of primer. Here you can see a bit of sanding is needed over here. A bit more sanding there. These edges need to be trimmed. A bit of sanding. So I just start off with the sanding block and give it a good old sanding on all the surfaces. I then use a bit of body putty to fill in all the gaps. I get it really messy so that I can sand it away. Once that's sanded away, all the gaps are filled. And I'm quite happy with that. We go for the final coat of primer. I then applied the first coat of tan colored paint. I just sprayed it over the areas that I know are going to have tan. I didn't really bother with the areas that didn't have it. Once that was all dried, it was time to mask. Using a bit of masking tape, I taped over the areas that I wanted to keep the tan color. So the parts that are exposed are only other parts are going to be painted with black. I used the blunt end of the knife to kind of push it into the grooves and then I used the sharp end of an X-Acto knife to cut and peel away. Once the whole thing was masked up, which took quite a considerable amount of time, it's going to be totally worth it. 
We then paint it with the black spray. I then expose the, the tips to give them their red tone. Once that was all dried, then peel away the masking tape, which is so satisfying and makes all that time worth it. Next I needed to do a dirty wash so I mixed a bit black with white paint and then dip the brush in a bit of water, make it nice and wet, pick up a bit of pick up a bit of the paint, mash it all over the surface as if you're making it dirty. And then what do you do with something that's dirty? You wipe it up. And this gives a fairly decent grimy used dirty look. As if it really got dirty and you try to clean it. Flip it over to do the other side. And here is the final product. I hope you learned a lot from that, I hope you can take something from that. I hope that inspires you to go out and create your own awesome cosplay props. So early in the video I spoke about making your prop con safe. So what this means is that most conventions will have rules and regulations of what weapons and what props you can actually take in. One of the easiest ways to, to make this differentiate from a real life weapon and a prop weapon is painting the tip red. Really simple and it's just you know by doing that you're just being more responsible about your props and prop making it also means that there is less chance that your prop will get taken away when you enter that convention when you're deciding on what cosplay you want to go for double check the conventions rules and regulations on props and replicas and see if you can take it in it's nothing worse than spending all your time on something like this for it to just be taken away so that's my little two cents on responsible prop making follow the rules put some red tips on your weapons and you should be okay if you really enjoyed this, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, please put them there as well, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Please like and share my video if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Hit that subscribe button, and remember, create to inspire. See you in the next one. <laughs>